you say what I think you said? Yeah, you said it! What's up, Yesterland fans? I'm Neil, and welcome back to another episode of The Toys That Made Sense. On today's episode, we're going over the recently released uh, six-inch carded figure. That's right, Gung Ho. I just told you about him on my last video. Well, I've got him as promised. We're going to be diving into him, checking him out, seeing all of his glory. And let me tell you, so far, I think he's probably one of the better ones on the carded here because he really, really looks like that vintage original figure uh, that we got as a kid back in the 80s. So you know what to do. Without further ado, sit back, grab your favorite beverage and snack, and I'll see you on the other side. All right, guys, I've got Gung Ho here in studio, and let's just get right into the card work. Uh, beautiful card, excellent card, love the graphic. You know, if they're going to do these cards, I'd like to see them get a little bit better, if you will, with the card thickness and the stock, but I understand what's going on. They're probably trying to save paper and all that crap, but outside of that, outside of the flaw of these cards being flimsy, the artwork on it is outstanding. They're killing it. I wish we can lose the warning and the choking hazard, but we all understand why we have to have that on there now. Recommended age four plus up in the corner. Hasbro insignia down here, retro style. And then we get right into Gung Ho. So let's bring them right on in. Let's look at that nice, beautiful card there. Just when I see that, man, just takes me back to... Um, the 80s. Uh, now, with this gung-ho, I never had this gung-ho. I had them in the traditional, um, you know, marine class A's, if you will, their dress. But uh, never had them in this variation. But looking at them, that's pretty cool. I like that tad on there. That looks pretty tight. Um, gets a nice little set of accessories here. Looks like we, we got his stand over here. We got his knife, we got the black hat. I was under the impression it was supposed to be a little bit more green or sea green to this, but I guess they went with the black to accent it because it almost looks like up here that this is uh, a green hat matching his uniform. We get the backpack, the pistol, and it looks like the tactical riot shotgun. Flipping it around to the back. Here you go. We've got G.I. Joe, Gung Ho, and his card file name and all that there. I'll go ahead and put that there for you now. If you want to go ahead and pause later on and come back, check that out. Moving up, we got Baroness, Lady J, Gung Ho, and Destro, all the legal mumble jumble. So overall, very pleased with the design and the placement and the setup on this figure. So without further ado, guys, let's dig into them. All right, guys, I've got Gung Ho out of package, and let's get right into it. So in this package, we get a total of six accessories here. Let's start with the stand, basic stand here with the G.I. Joe star tracing across the top. Nothing much there under the bottom. We got the place for the uh, name template at some point. Maybe we'll get those in a package deal. We got a black pistol here, a little rough around the edges with an extended magazine. But, uh, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Not going to lie. It's, it's, listen, it's nothing like Bobby's weapons, right, from Valiverse. And, and, and I don't want you to think I'm, I'm just drooling over Valiverse when I say this. At the end of the day, he's making better weapons, right? And we know that. And we could ultimately upgrade and accessorize if his weapons, you know, go with gung-ho or whatnot. But for the most part, at least Hasbro's making some attempt here. But the weapons are a little rough around the edges. Um... But it's not a bad looking knife. Then we move into the shotgun. I like this. They give us a two-tone like we get the green strap. At least it's just not solid black. And then this shotgun has almost like a charcoal, maybe brown kind of uh, tone to it. But um, yeah, I mean, it's it's rough. It's It's not, you know... I mean, it's molded nice, but it's rough. And when I say rough, I mean, it's just just rough. It's just the mold, and there's no real detail into it. So not a bad-looking shotgun, but, you know, they could have probably done a little bit better. Anyways, on the backpack. Nice backpack here. Gives me that retro feel just blown up. 
but at least it's got some nice detail in it, but really it's basic. You know, it's just, it's a, it's a backpack with packs on the side, nothing really there. And then we get into the hat. Now the hat is a little, I take that back when it, when I was saying it earlier in the package, it appeared to be black, but it does have a tendency to, you know, shine with a little bit of offset charcoal green color, if you will. And then on there, we get that, that eagle insignia or bird insignia there on the hat. I know it's kind of hard to see. There you go. And then moving into Gung Ho himself. Now, I want to state right here, this is a nice touch because if you watched uh, Val Affair, uh day two, uh, was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. Bobby on his shotguns said that they took the shotgun shells and that was another molded piece because he wanted them to accessorize to the to the side of the shotgun and he wanted to make them look and give you the effect as they were as real as you can get and this isn't bad on Hasbro for doing it until you get kind of when you look at it from the side it looks nice you could tell they're kind of molded even on the front they almost looked in individual but when you turn it around to the back it's just a solid ridge you know, line of the shells. They could have really broken that down, but you know, it's the small, it's the small details at the end of the day, that's going to make your stuff pop, but let's get into it. So down at the feet, working up our way to the calf, we've got his black boots. They've got some, uh, some, you know, design and looks like straps and whatnot. I almost feel like he looks like he's got uh, tree trunk legs, but when you face them forward on, it, it, it works. I just don't know if I'm kind of fond of that design. I, I don't really remember that on the vintage figure. I don't think there was that much detail. It was probably just a black boot. On to the side, we get a, we get his uh, sheath for his knife. So we'll go ahead and drop that in there now. And that fits just nice and perfect. Moving up, we get the articulation in the knees. Now, as you can tell, this one is very easy to bend. The thigh at the knee is a little more stiff on both sides. Uh, my left side's a little bit more stiff, but he does bend. Moving up the thigh, we got the thigh uh, Kydex holster, or it might even be a leather holster. A little disappointed here. I wish we would have had this pop. I wish this would have been more like a, uh, a black holster, something to accent this other side of the thigh. And could have stayed with the, with the straps. I don't care. He could have done black straps, something, but... Um, yeah, just a little miss there for me. Overall, I like this figure. I like this character, but I think it's just a little little bit of a miss. So let's go ahead and get that pistol down in there. That's how it looks like as it's holstered. And then moving up to the abdomen, the belt area, the belt is adhered on this figure, and then the crotch area. Now, <clears throat> before we go any further, this is where I'm a little concerned. Look at this. Does he look like a bobblehead to you. It looks kind of like a bobblehead and that's because of that waist. And what's one thing that drives me nuts? It's lines, things that don't match, things that don't blend well. And this does not blend well on the abdomen. Now I get it. It's meant for him to rotate and be able to pose in different areas, but there is a huge gap, huge. Now I might be picky or whatnot, but this I don't know. This kind of drives me nuts. So I was sitting here trying to force this back down to make this look believable. And that's about as close as I can. But then you get to the hips and it looks like he, he's losing his pants, if you will. They're sliding down. So, I mean, it's not, it's not a deal breaker for me, but I just don't like how that was sculpted. And you can see those lines. It just drives me nuts. All right, moving up into the chest, we get that pivoted abdomen crunch uh, mechanism there so he he can bend over that way and that's about as far as he can bend back because a lot of it has to do with the uh, the vest moving up into the chest I will say that's a nice tattoo there they did a good job on that the problem with mine is mine wasn't painted right down the middle and that is kind of hard to see so they missed it so I got a big flesh line going down the middle that kind of irritates me but we get that tattoo here on the abdomen and there's a little bit closer view. You can see what I'm talking about there. So that kind of irritated me. It's just those fine little details that uh, that do it for me. Anyways, moving up onto the vest. We've got a grenade on each side. 
This grenade actually looks darker than that one, and it's not the lighting. It truly is. You can actually tell this is a lighter paint, or however they did this, it's lighter. So uh, moving around, the vest is um, pliable, so you can pull this off if you need to. I won't be doing that in this video. Now let's jump over to the hands. He's got what looks like wristbands, but they're not watches. And he they give you two basically trigger hands for holding the weapon in, in either hand. The wrists rotate, but they do not swivel inward at all. Uh, moving up into the bicep, they are butterfly joint. Um, they spin on the bicep there, that's both sides. Spin, butterfly joint, and on the bicep. And then we get to the big, I don't, the big nuisance on the character, right? Pins. At this point, at this stage in the game, there's no reason for these pins. Now, I know some people are bothered by them, some people aren't. I think for the money that we're paying for and with the technology in the toy industry, we don't need pins anymore. You can make these as realistic as possible. So, I think it's time to get back to the drawing board and let's fix this. Now, looking at the... Um, uh, the, the bicep and the arm there. I saw this somewhere else. Someone said it doesn't blend right. And, and I can see what they mean, but I, I'm not going to critique that too much. But yes, it does. It seems like the forearm down here kind of sticks out larger over the uh, top bicep. And on this side, it blends. So I don't know. It's just little sculpting designs and all that. But anyways, that's about as far as he can go over T, over center, fanned out. And oh, that's about as far, like I said, again, as he can move over T post. Anyways, bringing him back down in, let's get up to the face sculpt. Probably the best part on this figure for me. This is the best part right here. Great figure, great face. They did a good job for Gung Ho. I'm going to give him credit where due. And that's about it. Gung Ho can look up. He can look down. He can look side to side. Whoops, sorry. And he does a 360 turn. And that's and he can look down like that. So guys, this is Gung Ho in a nutshell. Let's get him accessorized here real quick. Let's get his backpack on. Get his hat on. Let's see if that stays on very well. Now, I know Marines wear their hat kind of real high up on the head. That almost feels like it's going to pop off. But let's get him into a pose here. Let's see if we can do this without making any of the accessories pop off. Nope, there you go. The hat. The hat just popped off. So it looks like with Gung Ho, the only thing you're going to really be able to do is get that gun in that hand and if it will it's kind of irritating because of the strap <clears throat> i gotta force it a little bit here can't even get that finger in the trigger well and i don't want to snap the finger off but that is as that's about as good as you're gonna get that can't even get it to really go in there but bringing them down this is going to be about the only thing you can do with him. He does not have a, the hand. You can't open it up. You, you can barely swivel it, as you can tell. But let's get the hat back on. Let's, whoop, that hat ain't staying on, so that's, that's kind of irritating me already. And then let's get him on his stand. And we'll put that hat back on. So we're going to need to be careful with those hats. That hat will pop off real easily. So guys, let me know what you think. Did you like this review? Leave me a comment down in the comment section. Remember to like and subscribe to my channel. Remember to follow me on all of my social media. And as always, I'll see you in Yesterland.